tão estranho. Não, não. Não. Não, 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 My lung gets mad. My lung, he doesn't like me here. He doesn't like my humming. So now, different examples of ukulele that I do. <laughs> here goes all shame. <laughs> okay, so quick disclaimer. Um, most of the examples that I found on, on online, and I think that most people will find on the internet, are about autistic children that uh, are examples about autistic children that were given by their parents or the, their uh, therapist. And uh, while I think that you know some of them made uh, well, some of them may, made a lot of sense. Uh, some other ones I do believe were just off, or maybe like the parents were a little confused. Um, therefore, I do believe that those with children with speech impediments, it is important to get to know your child because no therapist or doctor is gonna be able to know your child better than yourself. A therapist can be of great guidance. However, I don't recommend taking others' examples and applying them to your particular case. Just how we learn to read our babies before they learn to speak, the same applies with kids with speech impediments. The ukulele is just a tool that they are using and one must be able to translate the message uh, from each particular case. That said, the following uh, examples and types that I do personal, personally, and I think are mainly uh, pertaining, I think are mainly pertaining to those that don't have speech delays. So I'm gonna start with the immediate uh, examples, right? Which is are the ones that are usually like automatic and uh, usually like either unintentional or just like just. Um, repeating movie dialogues that I mentioned earlier. Um, I just started doing it when I was when I moved to this country and I wanted to just uh, perfect my English, so I started to get into the habit of of copying the accent from characters in movies. So now I do it just unconsciously. Some times I don't even know that I'm doing it. Some other times I do catch myself right away that I'm doing it so I can either stop myself or... I think it all also depends on where I am. Mm. I want to say I don't usually do it when I'm in front of strangers, but then again, I I think I might have. So I'm I'm not sure because, like I said, it's it many times it's, un it's unconsciously. Um. So yeah, I do I do you you'll catch me. Um. My sister was trying to record me the other day, but when I know they're recording me, I I I, I, I get self conscious. So that's the thing. If I get self conscious, I'll stop doing it. But I, uh, you can ask my boyfriend, like, <laughs> you know, if I if I do it or not. It's just like, and my siblings like they hate me when like shut up, you know. They're always like, oh God, it's embarrassing. So, anyways, um, repeating or copying uh, a person's accent. So it can be from a movie or it can be in person. Yeah, it's, that that one is the most embarrassing one I think because. Um, it can be very awkward, you know, like, uh, I, I don't know if you've seen in, I don't know, like, comedy movies where, like, somebody's talking somewhere with an accent and they end up, like, like, end up, like, speaking like them. I think that's somewhat of a very human thing to do. You move into a country that have an accent and I see some of my friends within a month, they're already speaking like them. I don't know if they did it on purpose or subconsciously or it's both. Usually it's both. Um, but... Uh, what I do know is that uh, I really can help it sometimes when they have a very particular accent. I just want to copy it because I just, I just get something about me, like something in my self uh, subconscious. I just get so intrigued and like excited about you know weird or different or very unique accents. So yeah, 
and uh, the most also the most common one that I have is humming a song so like I said that could be from like the movie that I'm watching I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll catch myself sometimes or or people maybe notice like what I do like uh, the, the, the note they'll notice that I am humming the background music I don't always do it but sometimes I do so I'm like why does sometimes I do it since I don't but I think it's just like depending on how intense or how catchy the song is, I'll be all like. <laughs> that sounds terrible. No, I know. No. No, but you don't let me hum right now? You get me? Milo gets mad. Milo, he doesn't like me here. He doesn't like my humming. Okay, so... Um, shot too with this cute little sweater that I just got him. So one little quick side note about, one funny note about the hummies is that when people don't know me and or they never heard me hum before, all of a sudden like I'll just, uh, they, it's just it's just been happening with, with multiple people actually that they're suddenly, <laughs> they're suddenly go like this. Is that you? Is that you doing that noise? Is that... Is, how, how are you doing that? You know, that'll be like a very... Just... It's just funny reaction. Um, I guess it's funnier when you're there, like being there, but it's... Uh, it's trippy to see people tripping out. That they're just... I'll just be like, oh, Yeah, that's me. I do that. <laughs> so when I say things are embarrassing, I don't really mean like in a bad way it just means like I get embarrassed like I get like shy or self-conscious um, I think mainly is a stigma that you know we get about uh, not acting weird or not doing things that are gonna be seen wrong about other people or other people feeling embarrassed for us for the most part people are very understanding and they have never at least not in person that I have no uh, noticed my entire life, I can, it's been very limited at times where people have actually made a big deal out of idiosyncrasies. Uh, yeah, out of my ukulele and stuff. Um, I know I can be of annoyance to some people and that's why I, you know, get self-conscious and that's why I mean I get like embarrassed because it's just a natural feeling from humans to, you know, feel shy, feel embarrassed. But it's also mainly the, the stigma. I feel like that stigma is gonna go away it's gonna go away once people know more about the spectrum, about neurodiversity, and about uh, topics like ukulele and stuff like that, and just everything related to neurodiversity. Uh, the more people find out about this, the you know, at least you can not say like if they're gonna be assholes or jerks about it, at least they don't have the excuse of oh them not knowing. Uh, why like if they're gonna be assholes they're gonna be assholes regardless although they know what neurodiversity is they know what an autistic person acts like they know what equalia or stimmy is and they still gonna make you feel bad about it <coughs> stop fighting get your toy let me get it let me see your toy toy where's your toy oh my let me see your toy oh my goodness let me give me your toy give me give me give me your toy give me Grandma, you give me, give me the toy, give me. No, I want it. Give me the toy, give me the toy. Anyways, this is a uh, literally a whole another topic because there's a lot of like side things that I would like to kind of like explain about, you know, feeling embarrassment and the stigma, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um. Most likely gonna do, pretty sure I'm gonna do a video about this uh, as soon as I have a chance because it literally takes me a lot of time 
to do just one video because I make them very long but also because I just kind of making sure that I have the right the right points that I'm bringing up the right points that I'm not forgetting anything and then editing and all that stuff so I still have to do on this side so I barely have any time left to do any of this which does take a lot a lot of time but uh we'll talk about more of this on a different topic and again just if you want to add anything always add it to the comments below and that will help me to bring up these points on the next video definitely so uh one thing that i do i think this is a little bit part of the ukulele but also part of just my own uh i don't want to say natural stimming because i okay so this is this is where it gets a little you know overlapping with uh this kind of topics are so complex uh this is where it gets a little over or tricky right so i i do the sound like it's i know i'm not the only one that does it but i'm it's, it's very rare when I find somebody else that, that, that does this. And it does because of my uh, hypersensitivity, which I still overdo and I never did it. Um, so I started with the sensory processing, and then the hypersensitivity has been confused with that one, but it's slightly different. Hypersensitivity is like my allergies, pretty much. So I scratch my throat when I'm itchy, when um, there's like some allergens in the air that are making me either like overly sensitive and just kind of got through my nose and got all the way back to my throat and it starts I start scratching like this <coughs> um, that's usually the case uh, sometimes if I eat uh, I'm allergic also to certain fruits and nuts so uh, with nuts it's gotten like really bad so I really cannot even, um, I can't, I can no longer eat almonds, it's just, it just gets really intense, which is sad because I, I love fucking almonds. I used to be able to eat them and now I just can't. So, but with fruits, um, it does make me a little bit itchy, so I'm, I'm slightly allergic to some fruits, especially their, their, I think the peel or something like that, but things like watermelons and melons, stuff like that, are, are the ones that make me the most allergic. Yeah, and I, I will scratch my throat like this. <coughs> But I never started doing that until I heard my mom doing it. So when my mom started doing it, I was like, Mom, what, what are you doing? She was like, oh, I'm scratching my throat. I was like, so just like any kid, you want to, you know, you copy everything that you see. So I started going like, <coughs> so eventually, like, I guess, uh, I want to say subconsciously, I realized, I'm like, oh, this actually this actually works. This is what we've been needing or something. I, I want to say around the same time, my tolerance to allergens started increasing because I don't remember uh, suffering that much with the allergies at a younger age as much as I suffer them as, as, as I started getting older. So I think they, it's just kind of like one big coincidence, but I learned to scratch my throat by watching my mom. So that kind of like, and inside it like started it but also was kind of like I I needed it in a way um, so that that's a story the thing about this scratching is that sometimes uh, well you will think right I do it on purpose when I feel itchy but many times I it's, it's so subtle I don't even notice that I'm doing it like I have been uh, other noticed by others like what are you doing and I'm like what and like you're, you're doing the noise I'm like oh like I didn't either not realize that I was doing it or one time I um, a couple times I have recorded myself uh, having a conversation and then I noticed I'm like oh shit I was doing it I was doing that sound and I didn't notice and in some situations it has been really like embarrassing to me because I'm like oh wow that sounds horrible and I remember doing it when I was first uh, started dating my my boyfriend uh or well before we before we start dating and obviously i wanted to kind of have you know show the best you know side of me and i was so ashamed i was like wow like he's gonna think i'm like super weird and nasty making those weird noises you know so funny thing that he he didn't mind it as much or he just wasn't as like an asshole to make make a big deal like that's it you know like you make more noises so i don't think it's gonna work out so only when i'm like uh when i'm feeling really really itchy or uh i need to scratch really hard is when i actually know that i have to because i have to put an extra effort into the scratching okay so now this next one um to a lot of people i, I feel like some people might not 
ever thought about it, it's like a type of ukulele but based on what I research and stuff like that and just really thinking about it, it makes me believe that it, it could be totally a type of ukulele and it's so common that it has become normalized but it is a type of ukulele because when we're caught off guard and we don't know what to say we'll just say the same thing and our in a way I guess our brain has been pre-programmed in situations like this to just say the same thing back and I feel like this probably is mostly um, common among autistic people because many times we are um, very unsure of what to do in certain social situations, especially with small talk or especially um, walking into a room and uh, greeting people that we um, either don't know or just, it's just like every social situation requires different rules and different like, kind of like games to follow, like uh, just different just rules to follow. and. Uh, well, to the neurotypicals, it might be easy to know what to do in every situation or how to read people, how to read the room, how to redirect the conversation. People with uh, autistic people may not be very um, good at that. So, okay, I'm rumbling now. So, what what I mean to say it's uh, this type of ukulele is when we are repeating a greeting or a phrase when we don't know what to say at an unexpected moment. So this one happens to me a lot. <laughs> when people would say, hi, how you doing? I would just answer, hi, how you doing? So yeah, that's, I, I would always do that. So, but pretty much, um, I would say, hi, how you doing? I would say, hi, how you doing? And my boy had to point out to me that I actually need to answer instead, hi, good, how about yourself? <laughs> so I had to learn to memorize. It took me a little while to, to make it feel like to it will, so it would flow and come out natural because I remember like the first times I'd be like, hi, have um, good, good, hi, how about um, yourself? And and it just kind of like it just didn't flow natural. Like it, you could tell. I mean, right now it sounds different, but in that moment in that situation, it just sound very unrehearsed, very choppy, very like this person never you know, has never greeted before, or she's not really good with small talk. So, yeah, pretty much um, this leads to the uncomfortable small, small talk that most autistics uh, hate so much. I hate small talk. I don't know what to do with small talk. Like, I don't know what it's it for. Uh, sometimes I wish I could just go into a room and not greet anyone because I don't care for their day. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I do care a little, but sometimes not so much. Does this say that when we get caught off guard, uh, with the usual small talk, uh, small talk type of uh, situation, uh, my brain just freezes and uh, can't think of anything, anything else like fast enough to say. So yeah. So okay, the next one, probably the most crucial one, is echoing what a person says unwitting, un unwittingly. Usually, I do this when a particular phrase or sentence uh, caught my attention for the way it was said. So I like, oh, something just makes me like, like say it out loud. Like, like the other day, I think I was hearing some homeless people like argue outside my house, outside my, outside my apartment. And they were saying shit like, blah, blah. Oh, this stupid shit, blah, blah, blah. And then I would just kind of like hear it, I'll be like, oh, this stupid shit. Blah, blah, blah. So I'll just say it, I'll just, repeat what I hear like almost immediately I if it's something that really caught, caught my attention my attention I just feel like I can't help myself most of the time it doesn't happen happen that often so I can't really think about a time where I didn't do it but usually um, many times I catch myself before I say it and or before others hear me and sometimes I say it soft enough so soft enough so they can hear me and, and they so that they don't get offended if somebody was saying no uh, or at a store in public and they say something really weird or funny and then I'm blah, 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 and I'm like and I'm over here like low-key quietly I'm like blah, 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 blah. so I feel that I, I know I'm not the only one that does that but I know I not a lot of people do it like I'll be one of the few people um, mimicking that and I feel like if other people do it if 
it, it, it ha they, they're probably most likely on the spectrum. I know a lot of the, the people that I know that are on the spectrum, they, they do things like that. Like I had this, one of my employees, he would always like, you know, copy my, my, my laugh. So every time I laugh, he'll be all like, <laughs> and he was cynical about it. Like he didn't care. He, he would do it on purpose, but I feel like it was pretty much automatic. Like he wouldn't even help it. Like he couldn't, he couldn't help it even if he wanted to pretty much. And the amount of others that may look like I am trying, I'm trying to make fun of the person that I'm echoing or because I even changed like the pitch when I say it, like obviously I'm going to say it with a different pitch. So, uh, it, it, w it will look like, like a mockery. And I honestly don't remember when did this started or why. Maybe because of my habit of doing it with movies, I want to think, but I, um, but I started catching myself echoing um, other people as an adult since I, I don't remember doing it when I was a child or a teenager. So that's just one mystery. But um, yeah, like I, I don't do it like with the purpose of um, of offending people. So many times I'll do it all like. Like low, but it's, it's it's literally like a a reflex. Like it's 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 un, un it's unwittingly. Like it's, like I swear to God, it's unwittingly. And I have never, I don't think I've ever been caught. But sometimes I have I have said it, and I'm like, and I feel like the person like it's like they're so far away. You know when you see when you're talking, and you're like, there's no way they're gonna hear me with this volume. You know, like you're not necessarily whispering, but you're not talking loud enough where they can hear you. Few you, you know a, a room away or something. And you're like, they, they can't hear me. But then they look back and you're like, oh my God, they're hurting. You know, it's one of those things. But anyways, um, well, yeah, one of my cleaners will do the same. I happen to know this kid uh, pretty much uh, since he was little. And he actually found humor in his ecolalia. So not that I don't, but <laughs> he seemed to not realize uh, that he couldn't help automatically uh, equal in some of the stuff he heard. But at the same time, I think he understood the impact that his um, that he would have onto others, and he just didn't care. Put up, put up, put up. He, he was an ass. He's, he's still an ass. He doesn't care. But he's he's a nice kid. So, however, it seemed to fascinate him others' reactions. His mentality was more of a if you get offended, that's that's your problem, you know. So. This might seem surprising to some, but you can definitely find all kinds of mentality in the spectrum. There is no like one size uh, fits all or all those misconceptions literally uh, will debunk every single one of those misconceptions here about, you know, the autistic spectrum, uh, like be, be, oh, people with autism don't understand uh, blah blah they don't understand a complex this or they don't under they don't have empathy or they don't understand figures of speech or a sense of humor you know so all those are complete bullshit misconceptions so yeah so one may think that this kid was you know a total jerk or whatever you know but one important thing that I wish <laughs> Everybody understood. It's, um, which I've been getting on some fights with some people on social media, um, that they, um, they get offended because it's like, oh, so, you know, society doesn't understand this. But then they go ahead and judge others for not uh, thinking the way that they do. So it's like, you're, you're not being any better. You're also being judgmental, you know? You're also hurting other people. I've been having people hurting me because of my own uh, particular uh, beliefs or way of, of thinking or what my understanding of things is. And people are not respecting that. And this is the thing, like nothing is completely black or completely black there's, or completely white. So there's all like in, infinite shades of, of gray and that's really important that we all understand that um, you know nobody's gonna be like a hundred percent good or a hundred percent bad you know so there's we need to respect other people's individuality and that's really really important in any situation so now we're gonna talk about examples of the late ecolalia that I do so one, uh, the, the most, I think, main one that I do all the time that pisses off like a lot of people, especially my boyfriend gets so mad because he thinks I do it on purpose and I'm like, I swear to God, I don't do it on purpose. Like, but people seriously, like, 
It took you really this long to answer, like you were serious or not. But I realized that I was talking to you for like the longest time that uh, and it took you forever to answer. So I'm um, like, I swear, like I was like you, I was really like thinking about something else in the moment you caught me off guard. So pretty much, it's when um, people tell me something and they either catch me off guard or catch me like, which pretty much just like focus and concentrated on something else, either I'm working or I was literally just like straight up daydreaming and thinking about. So my little pony or whatever. So whatever they tell me literally um, gets saved into onto my short memory. You li uh, ready, Milo? Yeah, you don't you know, be a lazy bum, bum. You don't be a lazy bum. Hmm? So when they tell me something, I don't respond to it right away, but instead it gets kind of like, say, like I do get the stimuli that they're trying to talk, talk to me and it gets saved in the back of my mind for like a few seconds. So sometimes if I, 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 I'll respond fast enough or like the, whatever they told me is still fresh in my short term memory. I always, I always tell my boyfriend, that's how they say it, like it's saved somewhere in the back of my brain because <laughs> I have to bring it back or like forward to my working memory and I replay it, and many times I replay it out loud. So, so it takes me a few seconds to make the switch, right? So I come, I notice, I get the, I, I get the stimuli, and I'm like, Can I get the remote? Oh yeah, the remote. Here. It's like, I just got, I literally like, told you this like five minutes ago. Yeah, that makes him really upset. So that's kind of like an uh, equal, I think that's, well I utilize the equal the situation like this because I will, Repeat what he says a little bit after he says it, and I'm like, Oh, okay, okay. So I, I echo it. So there's that system of my brain that can echo phrases without necessarily understanding what they mean, but I can replay it. But then the other part of my brain that does understand language will hear it again. And I'll be like, oh, okay, gotcha. So, I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, the other examples are also humming a song I heard the other day. Like, sometimes I can hum a song that I heard, that I'm hearing right now. Like, if somebody's playing a song, I, many times I start humming it right away. Like, in that exact moment, I'm humming the song. But sometimes I'll just start humming the song because I, I remember it. And I start humming it out of nowhere, a song that I heard just the other day or like long time ago so I consider this one to be immediate as well as delayed because although I may not be equaling a specific uh, immediate sound per se it is an automatic stim that I do at certain moments that may be triggered uh, that may trigger it um, or when my mind simply wants to regulate and concentrate and the last one will be repeating word or being a word or a phrase that I heard the other day uh, same like what I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this video. Uh, I think we, we all do that in some way. If we are hearing certain phrases or certain uh, cat phrases or whatever uh, over and over again, we might end up like saying it like at a later time without even realizing why. Or sometimes we're like, yeah, we like this phrase and we intentionally start saying it. So it's just a type of ukulele, it's, it's, it's so normalized that it, it, it wouldn't be, for some people, wouldn't be considered, but it, it is. It is a type of ukulele. Okay, so this is the end of part one of what is ukulele. Part two is going to be posted next week, and it's going to be covering um, the rest of, well, very important, actually, uh, follow-up topics about this which um, we're gonna talk about confusing information about ukulele on the web which I have a lot uh, to say about all the wrong misleading information that I found as well as um, I found this one article that is called forget what you learn about ukulele the benefits of repetitive speech and it's a very interesting article I'm also gonna be reviewing that as well as a very sad and personal story that I experienced because of my ukulele that was an attack from another person that didn't understand a person like me and just thinks that they can just go around criticizing, attacking others 
because they're different or they act different than what they are used to. And I'm not just saying that neurotypicals do that. I've seen a lot of neurodivergents doing that as well. It's just simply, simply the tendency to attack others for having a different perspective or different mentality than the one that they think is right. And at the end of the day, nobody should think my mentality is the best, my mentality is right, and yours is wrong. We all have the right to be respective and the right to respect our beliefs, and that's what I stand for. So, other than that, um, I would like to hear your comments below, and if you find this uh, information valuable, uh, please share it so we can spread more awareness and more people really understand and know we can identify with uh, some of this bench demonstrations as mine and experience similar um, uh, similar things like I have with uh, things related to the autistic spectrum, which is not the horrifying uh, disorder and disease that a lot of people have been led to believe. So please help me by sharing this video and I really appreciate your support. Thank you. Is that you doing that noise? Is that you? What? 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 Is that you doing that noise? What? Why you do that? Why you do that, Snowy? What?